the picture now Germany aren't playing, but maybe you should have one last outing. I'm worried about his future in Germany, <laughs> I've got to be honest. Well, anyway. let's discuss all that. Sally and I are joined by Alpesh Patel, principal of Profidium Partners. Alpesh, thanks for coming in. Let's start with this spy swap story on the front page of the Moscow Times. Is this exciting your inner James Bond? Is it? Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to returning back to Moscow. <laughs> uh, it is fascinating because it is all unbelievable, but there is a very, very serious angle here in that, um, yes, indeed, 10 of the, the suspects in the U.S. will be swapped, it seems, uh, from, this, uh, from uh, this Russian source with 10 spies in the U.S. who um, have apparently admitted to, over various periods of time, um, spying for the CIA. Um, as I say, it, you know, it's very funny and, and, and all the rest of it, but the, the, the more serious aspect to this is um, don't forget people end up losing their lives as a result of these kinds of things. Uh, and so whilst, yes, we find it funny that they're at least going to do a spy swap, but um, clearly the reason they're doing it is because both countries um, do want to look after their assets and they have been doing um, presumably what each country believes to be quite important work. And presumably also they want to look after their economic interests because actually now Russia and America, they work pretty much in tandem, they're very, they're very important to each other in economic You're terms. right, it, it, it's a very um, diplomatic way of um, downgrading what could otherwise uh, a decade or two ago have escalated into uh, a war of words. Are you uh, worried for the bankers? Do you feel sorry for them? They're going to get less cash bonuses or smaller cash bonuses. You know, this, this, I'm absolutely gutted for the bankers, like everybody else watching this, I'm sure. <laughs> apart from the bankers who are watching us. Uh, apart from the bankers. Um, uh, the, the, the interesting thing about this story is that the, the, the people against bank bonuses being largely deferred over a three to five year period so that a banker can't make short term gains which end up being ticking time bombs and then the bank goes bust five years later as a result of it. The people who are worried about this say, well, wait a minute, it's a competitive global marketplace. Um, this is just EU-wide regulation. What if these talented bankers go off to the US? Well, let's not forget, it was all the talent in America within Lehman Brothers and all the rest of it which led to the credit. And I say, if they want to go over to the US, thank God, let's get, the, get, get this so-called talent out of the, U, um, out do you, of the I EU. Mean, do you like the idea that actually bankers have to wait for the yeah. bonus until until they've proved their worth. Yeah. Economists will tell you that if you're having an incentivization plan, it has to be as correlated as possible to the rewards being generated, and that was the problem previously. This way, they, they have to be more longer-term focused because they're not going to get the 40 to 60 percent, which is I mean, deferred. 20 to 30 percent yeah. still could be well, quite a lot of money, well, can't is, it, yes. depending on what they're doing, even well, cash bonus. It'll be a bit of a slap in the face of them because normally what happens is they're on a very low base salary, maybe 100, I say, relatively low, let's put it that way, 100k a year uh, sterling, oh, uh, 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 and then about 10 times that potentially on bonuses, and in some cases far, far more than that. This way, they're more locked in to the longer-term future uh, of the bank and uh, of the institutions Locked into the longer-term future is one thing, but I wonder, Alpes, do you think this really deters risk? Because in the end, banks want to make profits. And even if their staff are not being rewarded in the same way, the banks still want to make profits, and that means they're going to look for things that could be risky if they produce a good return. Yeah, I mean, look, the way it works in the financial system is you, you, you block the, 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 the leak which caused the previous crash and the risk just flows elsewhere. You cannot destroy risk. It just moves from one place to another. And what will happen is that the banks and the traders and the investors will look for co more complicated scenarios and uh, ways around this. But at least it sends the right signal and we're blocking um, l the problem that caused uh, the credit mm. crunch last time. We'll have to work out what's going to do. Exactly. Yeah, stress levels may go up for bankers, and there's stress tests underway at the moment for most banks in Europe, well, 91 in all. Uh, but as you and I were discussing earlier, yeah. perhaps yeah. not as stringent as they could be. I mean, I don't want to say it's probably a joke, but, you know, when you announce something uh, in the middle of July, which is as imp supposed to be as important as stress test, when the market's all gone off on holiday, um, you know you don't expect the results of it to be earth-shattering. Uh, there's 91 banks, and the fear is that this is a form-filling questionnaire, which the banks themselves fill in, not the regulators, that they don't go in there and interrogate them under a sort of uh, under a white lamp and say, look, what's really going to happen? In the what you do is you fill in a form, you send it back, 
to the regulator and guess what? Hey presto, all 91 banks will come back saying, well, yes, you know, uh, we'll be okay. And that's supposed to build confidence. Mm. Interesting story in the, uh, the European Voice newspaper, which is, I suppose, a sign of our economic times as well. They were concentrating on this fusion reactor to produce yep. cheap energy. Lots of governments were investing money, but now, of course, they're not keen to invest much more. And I guess that's because, actually, in austerity times, they don't really want to commit money. Well, exactly. Um, the, the bigger problem here is that the EU said they wanted this within their territory. It's based out of France. Uh, would potentially be the, um, the, the, the sort of the holy grail of energy production being uh, fusion as opposed to traditional fission reactors. Uh, and the other half come from outside countries. Well, actually, it might be that the EU goes back and says, look, we need to renegotiate terms with China, mm -hmm. South Korea, India, the wealthier countries, uh, and say, otherwise, look, sorry, guys, we just ain't got the money. We, we said we were rich, but we're not as rich as we... Uh, thought we were. Are you talking sure of wealthy people. Yes, yeah, talking what about those wealthy footballers? I, I just can't <laughs> believe it when Germany lose. You watch them and they're always so efficient and effective and I have to say I was completely heartbroken at watching sort of the Germans lose and in tears and, and you know all, all the all the despondent people you in, in so very Berlin. Sincere, Al Pesci, you you are say. questioning <laughs> my sincerity. Okay, so who's your money on now? Very briefly, who do you uh, I think it's going to be the Spanish, not least because they need a, a boost to their economy. <laughs> okay, right. For economic reason it could be a Spanish win. Al Pesh, thank you very much thank indeed. Thank you. And that's it from Sally and from me. Goodbye we'll see you them. soon. Stay with the BBC. I like you.